How are you? Uncle Russ, jumping up and down. Welcome to At Random here on good old group W Cable. And another one you've knocked over. Good for you. How'd you like the weather last week? Sort of crazy? Strange, strange weather. Got some strange kids for you. All American kids, actually. You don't find too many of those nowadays. We got Frank Audie and Elizabeth Romano, both uh, juniors in high school. I think Frank goes to Fortson and uh, Elizabeth goes to uh, Dearborn High. We're going to talk, be talking to these youngsters about schools. You know, how do they perceive their schools and how do they perceive teachers? You know, what's good about a teacher, what's bad about a teacher? So hang in there. They're Kids are pretty honest, so hang in. Well, if you wonder what uh, I've been jumping up and down about all week, I guess the tax increase that finally Blanchard got through. You know, a lot of us voted, uh, at least, uh, well, I got to tell you, I voted for Headley, so you know where I'm coming from. But uh, Blanchard got elected because of the fact that he was going to create uh, jobs and so forth and so on and save America. And the first thing he does is raise the taxes on us. Now, have you ever wondered why we have to raise the taxes? Well, it's because the same politic politicians have brought us back, have brought us to the point where we have that we need more money. In other words, I guess the craziness, from my way of thinking, is the fact that they spent themselves into the hole with all their silly programs. And now we have to bail them out. And that goes on uh, ad infinitum with these fellows. So the next time you run into a politician, you know, and they're always got their hands out and they're always smiling. And, you know, I even read that the uh, Blanchard and, and his wife, the imperial wife, she, I, I'm not sure I like her. Uh, she, uh, they, they want a receiving line. There was some big cocktail party and everybody else, there were a lot of big shots there. And, uh, but she demanded a receiving line. <laughs> Come on, he's a politician. No more, no less. So the next time you run into these politicians, you know, we're normally in awe of them. Oh, I think we ought to just lay it on them. Just say, hey, I'm sick of the taxes. I'm tired of your silly programs, and you ought to hear it from me. That's what we ought to say to these guys. You notice how our friends in the media have been playing the game. Uh, the Democrats are great at uh, messing up the media. They control the media, basically. Liberal people control the media. You have to understand that. The Democrats, all for the last year and a half of the uh, Reagan presidency, have been banging away with something called Reaganomics. They've been attacking his economic you know, programs. All of a sudden, we see inflation going down. The outlook looks very good. Things are starting to improve in the world. And you notice you hardly ever hear, you hardly ever hear anything about uh, Reaganomics anymore. They've lost the issue. So where are the Democrats focusing now? On the EPA. That's what that's all about. They, they, can't, they can't hit the man on the economy anymore. So where are they attacking? They're moving their attack over because they have precious few issues to attack the president on. If you don't believe the media is manipulated or that the media manipulates you, then I suggest you just sit down and watch the evening news. And if you want to see the most rude person on television is that fella on ABC, uh, Frank Donaldson. You know, it's one thing to be angry or disagree with the President of the United States, but at least you could show respect for the office. But that guy in a press conference is plain rude, and every time he has a report, he just tears into Reagan with a personal vendetta. And quite frankly, quite frankly, he should at least respect the office of presidency. You know, the governor, I don't think much of Blanchard. He hasn't impressed me at all, but I'd still respect his office as governor. Well, what do you think? I, those are some things that I've been thinking about during the week. If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But enough of this. Let's get on talking to some bright young people from our town. Frank Waddy from Fortson High School and Elizabeth Romano from Dearborn High. I'll be back right after these announcements.
back again. Uncle Russ jumping up and down. Well, my brains just told me that I did it again. It, wa it wasn't Frank Donaldson, it's Sam Donaldson. You know, you always, you always leave it to Ted Turner to correct you. Ted's one of our cameramen here. What's his real name? It's not Ted Turner, is it? <laughs> Don't give me a ear lip. What's your real name? There we go. Anyway, we, 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 we at least got that part clear. Enough of that nonsense. My guest, Frank Audie and Liz. Frank, you're a Fortson High School person, yeah. right? Yes. What I want to know, Frank, is why do you have a Dearborn High jacket on? Is that a Dearborn High no, jacket? No, it's not a Dearborn High jacket. They'll kill you at Fortson. <laughs> I know. That's, well, it's orange and black, isn't it? That's Dearborn High's color. I'm advertising for some uh, hair salon. Oh, it's a hair salon. Yeah. You got enough of it there, Frank. You need a haircut. <laughs> yeah. You sure? Listen, where, what's Fortson's colors? Yellow and blue. Blue and gold. Blue and gold. Blue and gold. That's right. I'm, I'm, I graduated from Fortson. Did you know that? I knew that. Did you know that? Do, you, do they still have the senior fountain there? Um, no, we just did a story on that for Tri School News, and they're not using that no more. They're not, not no. using that. Liz, what grade are you in? 11th. At? Dearborn High. Dearborn High. Is it a coincidence that I have? Are you both Italian? Yes, I'm yes. Italian. Two Italians on my <laughs> show today. What does that T-shirt say? Is that a nasty you have on your T-shirt no, there? No, it's Janitis. Oh, Janitis. Hole in the wall. It's a little... It's like an, no, it's an Italian restaurant where it's like a family setting. Oh, really? And they have like a table dinner. You come in and they have, all, it's all you can eat Ooh, for a certain price. That sounds great. Really and that's out in Northville. Yeah. Of course, I like Amato's here and Liberati's. You ever been to those places? I've been to Amato's, not a Liberati's. Liberati's is great. You've been to Liberati's. No. You have oh, yeah, I went there. That's yeah, on Chase, I think. No, it's no, somewhere uh, in Wyoming or Miller. No, no. You don't even know where you are. <laughs> What's going on with our students? Here I wanted two very bright young people from... I, Chase Roy, that's a uh, Dearborn Villa. Dearborn Villa, but that's yeah. Liberati's, I think. No. No? no? I'm the one that's wrong. <laughs> oh, I know. You're right. It is the Dearborn yeah. Villa on Chase off of Ford. Right. And the one I'm talking about is not, it's on Miller, on Miller Road, Liberati. So we got that straight. What do you think about your education, kids? Come on, tell me. Is it good or bad in Dearborn? I think it's pretty good. Why, Frank? There's a lot of opportunities. Um, I think uh, the, your regular classes are, um, they make you take a lot of classes that are going to be beneficial to you. Like, they make you take, take um, a lot of science and a lot of math. and just can't take a lot of blow-off classes. What's a blow-off class? You both smiled when Frank <laughs> said that. What, what's, tell me what a blow-off class is. Media one? Would that be a blow-off? No, nah, like um, three semesters of study hall or something like oh, that. Oh, advanced <laughs> study yeah. hall. We used to call uh, classes like basket weaving 101. Of course, that was in university. Uh, paper dollies cut out 202. Uh, <laughs> do they, they still have classes like that. Yeah. But you don't take it. No. I, you, you, you prefer the hard, the hard stuff. What no. are the hard courses, as far as you're concerned? Oh, let's see, advanced comp. Advanced comp. I hear comp. that's hard, yeah. I have that next year. And um, the math classes, if you keep progressing, they get more difficult, like trig mm -hmm. and things like that. And um, oh, let's see, the science classes, they have, I think it goes up to chemistry three right. or two, and those get harder as you go along, too. And are you going to take those things? Uh, science doesn't interest me. I, I like to go into communication, so I'm taking mostly business classes and, and um, communication. And communication yeah. type classes. Frank, how about you? Well, I'm taking all the uh, required classes, plus um, I'm going on, I took chemistry one and two, biology one and two, and physics one and two, because, you know, I never know when I'm going to need them in college, because I still don't know what I want to be in life, and they might come in handy someday. I see you on television a lot, though. You're on the Tri School News, <laughs> yeah. too. I had Carol Lutz on the show a couple weeks ago. She's your producer, right? Yes. You do their sports. Yes, sports director. And uh, that's quite an experience, isn't it? Sure is. Um, I just got into it this year thanks to Mike Koenig. And, um, he's a fortune boy. Right. In fact, he's the host on another show. Um, School Report. School Report, sure. He got me involved in it, and I'm glad he did because it's really opened up a lot of new things for me. Like, I've been announcing basketball games and football games, and it's like kind of a little you, dream come true. You, you love sports. Yeah, I'm really into sports, so. Do you play sports yourself, Frank? Um, yes, I do. Now, uh, how, you, you, you're over in Fortson, no, you're at Fortson, right. but you're over at Dearborn High, because I see you running around over there all the time. Right, I take your mass media class over there. That's so. why I see you running around. Yeah. But I don't see you all the time. Where do you go the other times? I don't see you. You sort of disappear. I'm <laughs> uh, doing stories or you know, 
all over at Fortson and the other in at Edsel. Right, and a lot of editing time here at Group W. So you spend a lot of time outside of the actual classroom, but you're actually doing doing schoolwork. Right. What What's a good teacher? How, how do you guys, you ever had any good teachers in, in Dearborn and Fortson? Mm -hmm. well, what's a good teacher? What, 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 what do you look for? Liz? Um, a good teacher is someone who enjoys his work, who takes time to um, sit down with the students and, and talk to them on a one-to-one -one basis and not just as a whole and help with individual problems. Um, someone who really cares about his work and who wants to teach the kids. Can you, how can you tell if a guy is sincere or a person, a teacher is sincere? I mean, what, what you say he sits and he talks with you, but you know, that might just be goofing off. Maybe he's just tired. You know, he doesn't want to teach, so he just sits there and carries on a conversation with you. Well, you can probably tell if a teacher is a good teacher or not. Like if he's just giving you busy work and stuff like that, or or if he's like the work you're that you're doing is going to be beneficial to you. Well, what's busy work now? Busy work is work just to keep you occupied during class so everyone's not talking. Is that mm -hmm. when the guy says, "All right, open up the book and read page uh, 34 to 52 pages, uh, and then write the questions at the end of the chapter"? Is yeah. that a good or a bad teacher? I guess it would depend. Depends on the class. Well, when would it be good and when would it be bad, do you think? Well, for classes like probably government or econ, it would probably be, be beneficial. I used, to, I used to find reading government books deadly dull. Does that still go on? Unless you want to be a politician, I guess. Yeah, like right now I'm taking civics and it's a good class and everything. and It's a good teacher, but like all they talk about is court cases that happened 20 years ago. And so yeah, you weren't even born 20 yeah. years ago, so what do you care, right? Yeah. What what are some of the, the who are some of the teachers that you had at, at Fortson that are really good, Frank? Um, well, a lot of people. Stand out? A lot of people say Mr. Steinoff, who's a history teacher, is a really a bad teacher, but I don't think he's really that bad. It's just he's really demanding, and you got to put a lot of effort. So you think Mr. Steinoff's a good teacher? I think he's a good teacher. He makes you work. Yeah, I know Mr. Steinoff. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. He's an excellent teacher. He is so well informed that it'll turn your head around. Now, I think Stoinoff is a tough teacher. I agree with you. But I think he's very good, and I think he's a very fair man, too. Is that your impression? Yeah. I, yeah. Who are some of the other teachers you've had that you think are really good? Um, I have, right now, I have Mr. Olson for my trigonometry teacher, and he's really a fantastic teacher. Okay, what does Mr. Olson do in trig that makes him such a good teacher? Well, his way of class procedure, like right when you come into the class, you get your homework checked right away. So then, if there's any questions on it, he gets that taken care of right away, and his explanations are really very good. And immediately he gets into the next day's class lesson, and he does an excellent job of explaining. So there's a little variety. Right. And he, he has some order in the classroom. Yes. And you know what to expect. Right. No surprises. No. And you feel comfortable in that. Yeah, he, he like kind of relaxes you. He, at the beginning of the year, he'll tell you that, um, um, don't be afraid to ask any question, and if I seem to get upset, I'm, I'm upset because I'm not able to answer your question completely. I'm not uh, upset at you. He's, so. just, he's frustrated at his inability, right. his own inability yeah. to communicate. That's a big thing with teachers. Liz, how about you? Over at Dearborn High, well, name some teachers that you think are... Excellent. We have a lot of good teachers okay. at Dearborn High, I feel. That you've had. Let's talk um, about some of those good ones. Let's see, for math, I had Mr. Nass days, and he, to me, he explained very well. I had him for geometry one and two. And he got through to me because at first I was like lost. And he explains it one way, and then if you don't understand it, he'll use a different approach and explain it into more teenage terms. You know, it's not all this big. Fancy talk. Yeah. And that helped a lot. Um, let's see. Mr. Bremenkamp is also good. Yes, anyway, he's been mentioned right. several times. I think Matt Gee, the fellow from the Air Force Academy, mentioned uh, Gordon as an excellent teacher. And then the English departments, probably Mr. O'Hagan. Yes, he's, he's excellent. He is so well informed. I like to listen to him lecture. He, he knows so much. I think he came out of uh, the University of Windsor, as I, if I'm not incorrect on that. Absolutely the most knowledgeable man in theater and literature that you mm -hmm. can bump into. Just super guy. So you've had good teachers. Now, let's talk about some bad teachers. You better not mention their name because they'll get angry at you. But what, what do bad teachers do? I mean, tell me what a bad teacher is. Well, they don't seem to care what they're doing. I mean, they don't, yeah, they don't seem to. I, they just are there because they're getting paid for it and they feel they have to put in their time. They don't explain well. 
Mm -hmm. um, if you have questions, they get upset at you because you don't understand and why are you so stupid, things like that. Do they actually say, why are you so no, stupid? No, but they go, the way they answer your question, it's like, oh, you dummy, you know? So you get that feeling. Yeah. And you remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. Frank, how about you? I, I, don't know, I didn't really have too many bad teachers. I've been lucky so far, but so I don't really know what a bad well, teacher Well, but what does a teacher do that makes you angry? Tell us some things. How about ha handing your papers back with great big red? I'm an English teacher, so I, we, you know, we, we, we love red pencils. Have you noticed? Big red things, and some of us like to hand back your E's and flash them around to all the other kids. You ever had that experience? And the thing I don't like some teachers do is like they, like you'll take a big test, and then uh, when they pass them back, they take the grades orally. You know, they go down to the so everyone. So everybody in the world knows. <laughs> you, you don't like that? No, I don't. What's wrong with that, as far as you're concerned? If I want to tell someone my grade, I'll tell them, you know. Yeah, even young people have privacy. I hated it when teachers did that. Particularly if I goofed off on a test and I got an E, all of a sudden I began to feel like an E person. You know, I had a student one time, would you believe that I had a student who told me that he was an E student? And he thought he was an E person because he'd, he'd, he'd received several E's and he was beginning to bleed. How can you be an E person? God doesn't make E persons. You make people that maybe not do well on a test, and you can be an E person on a test, but you certainly can't be an E person. You agree or disagree on that? It's, I think it's the effort you put into it. The effort that you put into it. Any other things that teachers do that, that drive you up the wall? Now think hard, right, come on. <laughs> I'll just, maybe if they um, lecture all hour and don't let you get to your work. That's In other words, if easy. they talk too long, uh -huh. Do you like do you like it broken up, a, 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 an hour? You, your classes are about an hour length, right? Yeah, fifty-five, 55 minutes. minutes. Do you think it's better if a teacher maybe takes ten or fifteen minutes of discussion, maybe ten minutes with a film strip, maybe fifteen minutes or so with uh, with some written work, and then maybe some uh, you know a summation at the end? In other words, variety within that hour. Do you think that's a better teacher? I think so. It probably, but it would depend. Depend again on the class. Yeah. What uh, What are the things that teachers do that confuse you? Is there anything that they that, that confuse you? Sometimes they go through things too fast. They make they go rapidly through something. Yeah. What really kind of teed me off was last semester that the we didn't get all the material we had to get covered. Mm -hmm. and then we get down towards the end of semester. And we're just doing all this work. They got to start speeding up. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you ever noticed we always give all the tests every, in every class about on the same day? Yes. Yeah, it, seems <laughs> that way. it seems that way. It happens that way. Do you know why it happens that way? Now, I'll tell you from a teacher's point of view. Most of us plan our things in weekly plans. You know, we have a little weekly, uh -huh. not the weekly reader, the weekly planner. And we sit down there and we say, well, Monday we'll introduce the topic Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll develop it, and on Friday we'll give them a quiz. And bingo, guess what happens? Everybody in, in the teaching, on the teaching staff is doing the same thing, so who suffers? The student. The students. What about homework? Good, bad? Um, the homework it all depends on you. I mean, if you, can, if you have a study hall, you're not going to have as much as somebody else. Mm -hmm. Or if you have blow-off classes, as you call them, you won't have as much either. Do you, uh, do you think homework serves a purpose? Uh, if it didn't, I don't think they'd give it to us. Uh, I think it's good training. I think. But I also think that there are times, I don't give a lot of homework. For the simple reason, I believe that young people should also have time just to be young people. But I don't question the right of any teacher to give a lot of homework, because when you get out in the world sometimes, things come in, you know, they pressure you like crazy. And you, you have to learn and to take the good with the bad. What about the variety of teachers that you have? Do you think it's good that you have some young ones, some old ones, some middle-aged ones, some happy ones, some grumpy ones? I think it's good because you get, like, not different generations, but a different viewpoint of each one at, at their ages. Mm -hmm. You get the different areas that they're teaching in. Where do I land in there? Am I, I guess I'm, I'm an old dude, right? Well, well you're, you're kind of uh, an old guy, but, you know, you see things at our level. Oh, I do? Yeah. Hmm. So I was kind of an old guy. How yeah. old is old? When are you old? <laughs> I call my parents old and they're over 50. 
My dad's 50, so I guess 50 is old. Oh, 50 is old. Depends on how you look at it. When you were in, uh, when you were in kindergarten, who's old? You remember back to kindergarten? Probably anyone in high school. Anybody in high school, they're old, right? Have you ever heard uh, of, a, of a high school girl dating a boy in college? Mm-hmm. Let me think about that. Is that old? Is she going out with an older guy? Liz, you're smiling. Come on, what do you think? Do you go out with a college guy? No, not yet. He's a senior. Oh, he's a senior? Yeah. So he's an old guy? No. That's all right yet. if he's in, in school. Frank, right. you go out with older women? No. <laughs> That's fun talking to you. You're great kids. Um, I guess we could sum up that you feel good about your education. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. Would you vote for Millich if you had to vote for him? I don't really know what's the complete issue, but from what my parents have been saying, I don't think it's too good. You're unhappy with what's going on. Yeah, they seem the, to be. They seem to be unhappy. How about your parents? I'm not really home a lot to talk about it. <laughs> so, I'm always busy. So you really don't talk with your parents too much about Millich? Not really. Okay, well, I, I came out for it. Now, of course, I have a vested interest, right? Uh, you're a teacher. Sure, I'm a teacher. I, I obviously want it. Uh, I want it for a, for, a, uh, for a reason, and that reason is that I think that our educational program will suffer if we don't have it. And actually, we may be asking for more mills, but because of the assessment of property, in other words, what it's based on, the value of property has dropped in Dearborn. So we may be asking for more mills, but the amount of money that we're going to receive is about the same as we received before. So that's something you want to talk about. Listen, thank you, Liz Romano and Frank Audi. Hey, I'll be right back after these announcements. Attention all Ford UAW employees. Midwestern Dental Plan is now available to you March 28th through April the 15th. Our membership has saved thousands of dollars through the Midwestern Dental Program at a time when dental care costs is high. I urge you to join now. Midwestern Dental Plan eliminates out-of-pocket expense for most dental work, including braces. Over 10,000 families are now enrolled. Complete and return the Midwestern card you received in the mail. From the words of young people, wisdom. Russ Gibb, hey, for those of you that took time to view the show today, I'd like to say thank you. For those of you that took time to drop me a card or a letter, I'd like to say thank you. But most of all, I'd like to thank you for just being you. Russ Gibb at random. <laughs>